This is a lovely case which uh, Antonina Kalmakova of CSD Healthcare shared with me and I, I really felt I had to make a video of it. It's such a lovely, lovely um, lesion. Now, uh, I don't have the clinical history for this, but I, I think we can, we can make one up that would fit very, very nicely. So let's, let's just assume that this biopsy comes from a young person, say a teenager, who presented with uh, smallish 0.5 to 1 centimeter uh, diameter erythematous scale lesions on the, the trunk and the arms. And let's make it an even better clinical history and we'll say that the child had a, a strep sore throat a few weeks previously. And um, even at this magnification, with that clinical history, we can look at this tiny piece of tissue and we can make a diagnosis of guttate psoriasis. And in fact, uh, that would be quite good enough. The thing is, guttate psoriasis is pretty recognizable clinically, and with that history, the dermatologist is probably unlikely to do a biopsy terribly often, so we're, we're jolly lucky to have this one. Um, so let's look at it at slightly higher magnification and see what we, get, we can glean from it. Well, really, uh, that says everything. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It shrunk slightly. There, there we are. So we have, um, we've got a, these are the scales that presented clinically. That, that's really the whole lesion. And um, there's some scale which was cut out in places, but it would have gone across the whole top of that. And in the scale, we have these um, sort of oval, darkly staining areas. And we'll look at those in, in close up. So here we go. Now, um, this is really very nice. Uh, we'll have to assume that this edge here is the sort of the normal thickness of the skin. And so this uh, epidermis is certainly acanthotic with some elongation of the reti ridges. I don't think we're getting thinning of the suprapapillary plates, but we can notice right in the middle and over there and over there, there are prominent dilated papillary dermal blood vessels. Uh, and that's a, a very useful pickup clue for a diagnosis of psoriasis, no matter what the type, it's, it's invariably present. So that's the first thing you look for in the case of psoriasis before you go gazing at the scale on top. Now let's look at this at higher power and see what, well, isn't that just so nice? You can see why I couldn't resist showing this to you. It's just a, a lovely example. There's orthokeratosis. Underneath is parakeratosis, and in between there are lots of neutrophils, and the same thing applies on this side. And in the middle, there's a little focus of, of parakeratosis. Now, uh, it's interesting, if we look, um, we look at at uh, higher power. There's it. Be, it you'd be hard pushed to say anything much about the granular cell there. It's certainly not obviously lost. But then, of course, we've got some lamellar uh, hyperkeratosis underneath. So that would uh, that would fit quite nicely. And if we look here, uh, there are the neutrophils. And uh, I don't know whether there's a times 40. And so you can see orthokeratosis, parakeratosis, and neutrophils in the middle. And we're going to go back just to the lower power because I wanted just to have a little look at um, the, uh, the vessels. 
because they're an important and integral part of diagnosing any variant of psoriasis. So let's look at those at very high power. You see, that's, that's perfect um, dilatation and prominence of the papillary dermal capillary loops. And that's the very first sign that you see in psoriasis. Uh, if there was nothing else, that on its own, in the right context, would be sufficient. There you get it there. There's even a little bit of red cell extravasation there. And there again, we've got these vessels dilated. Uh, and there's a papillary dermis there and there with more dilatation and of these loops. So um, on the basis of the histology, um, this is, uh, it's just diagnostic of gut psoriasis. Uh, the only differential, di well there are two differential diagnoses you might want to think about. Firstly, um, you have to think of a fungal infection, particularly a dermatophyte infection. And uh, so I think it's always prudent to do, to do both a diastase PAS and a methanamine silver or some other silver stain. The point being that not all hi-fi uh, stain with one or the other. Sometimes they stain with both and sometimes high will be picked up with the silver stain and not with the diastase PAS and vice versa. So to increase your sensitivity, I, I would recommend you always do both. And the other, the other low power differential, I suppose, would be pitarasis rosea, because the, if you forget there are neutrophils in there, they do resemble, this scale does remember the so-called teapot lid sign of pitarasis rosea, but then, of course, that that um, that that presents quite different uh, clinically. Patients uh, present with the so-called herald patch, which is a uh, an oval patch uh, um, on the trunk or proximal extremities, and then the patient subsequently goes on to develop lots of uh, of pink patches which tend to follow the skin crease lines it's, uh, uh, um, so, sometimes called Langer's lines and this gives rise to a fir tree like distribution of lesions so of course that's quite unlike psoriasis and the other thing is in pitarasis rosea you you do not see neutrophils and um, uh, generally, uh, you'll see uh, foci of spongiosis deep to the the um, parakeratotic scale, and um, so I I don't think in this case uh, we need to think about that at all. But it is a differential that you might think about at low power. Now um, I think that really. All I can say about this is just a beautiful example of gut psoriasis, something you won't see very often. And uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for, for listening to it.